a little weak in my body. Can we just pray for a minute? Thank you, Jesus. Intercessors, prayer warriors, just begin to pray all over this place. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I need some strength this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, will you just pray for me? Just pray for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just pray. Hallelujah.
He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said. You can take your seat at this time. I just want to speak to you for a few moments from the thought, the need of the Holy Spirit. The need of the Holy Spirit. How many know that we need the Spirit of God if we're going to make it? Come on, somebody. Especially in these last and evil days, we need the Spirit of God. So, amen. I don't expect to get a lot of amens this morning. I'm going to um, try to take it slow and teach you this morning, amen, because we have a lot of preaching, but how many know that teaching is what instructs us to live and to practice what has been taught? Amen? Amen. A lot of times preaching can get us excited, but teaching will allow us and give us step-by-step -step application on how to apply this word to our life. Amen? Amen. So uh, we are in the series, like I said, on the Holy Spirit. If you were here last week, the Holy Spirit just took over this place. Bishop, speak to get your glow back. Amen? The Holy Spirit, first bishop said, the Holy Spirit is a person. So I want to back that up with the word. Amen? We know that first in, in this particular chapter that Jesus was speaking of the Holy Spirit and he referred to him as a person. Uh, we further know this by because he possesses the characteristics of a person. First, he possesses knowledge, which can be found in 1 Corinthians 2.11. Uh, the second thing he possesses is love, which can be found in Romans 15.30. The next thing that he possesses is a will, which can be uh, found in 1 Corinthians 2.13. We also know uh, by the word that he does the work of a person. The first thing he does as he speaks that can be found in 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Uh, the second thing he teaches, which can also be found in 1 Corinthians 2 and 13. Are you going to help me this morning? The next thing that he, that he finds, we find in the word, is that he guides us, which can be found in John 16. 13. The next thing is he forbids us. The, the, that is Acts 16, 6 to 7. And the last thing uh, that I'm going to mention is that he searches, which can be found in 1 Corinthians 2 and 10. This is why we need the Holy Spirit. The, number one, are you here with me this morning? Number one, we need uh, we need the Holy Spirit because he declares war on our flesh. Can I back that up with Bible? Galatians 5 and 17 says, For the flesh lusts lust against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you will not do what you wish. So we know that the spirit declares war on our flesh. What does flesh mean? Flesh is carnal. Flesh is sin nature. Flesh, the flesh is self. Uh, flesh also, as I was doing a word study, is unaided human effort. Unaided human effort. So this tells us that we are no match for our flesh. It is only by the empowering of the Holy Spirit that we will be able to overcome our flesh, which is our sin nature. I know a lot that we say in church that we tell us, we tell each other that we need to get ourselves together. But let me tell you that you don't have the power together. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but I try. Come on, somebody. I, I would go through the motions and I try to get myself together, but how many know that is self-righteousness? Come on, somebody. And the Bible said that all our righteousness is as filthy rags. But the Bible said that we have become the righteousness of God. Why? Because the sacrifice of Jesus Christ proved the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Are you here with me this morning? 
morning. So the, what, what, what happens is, is that the, the spirit, when we get the spirit within us, it declares war on our sin nature. Paul said it like this. He said, there's another, come on somebody, law at war against me. And there was a war going on in Paul. But that was the sin nature. That was the appetites that Paul created prior to coming to Jesus. Are you going up? morning, but the Spirit of God declares a war on your flesh, so you will not do what you want to do, but you will be subject to the Spirit, but I got to ask you this morning, that the Spirit does not go against your will, so I got to ask you this morning, are you feeding the flesh, are you feeding the Spirit, because whatever you feed will be the strongest, but if you Oh my God. 
this. I used to say, I know how much control the Holy Ghost has by how much control you have. Because the Holy Ghost imparts self-control to us. That's one of the fruit of the Spirit. That's an attribute of the fruit of the Spirit. And if we don't have self-control, then the Holy Spirit really doesn't have control of us. And that's why we can sit, and I can, I can discern it, we can sit in the house of God and we can hate one another. We can be jealous of one another. You're, come on, somebody. Your brain does nothing if you've got hatred in your heart. Come on. Because the Bible says, how can you hate your brother which you say? Come on, somebody.
For you do not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Our Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The next thing that the Spirit does that I'm going to point out here is the Spirit confirms our identity. The Spirit confirms our identity. Once we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth, we're saved. We now become sons and daughters of God. But what the Spirit does is he confirms what you already know. So what happens is in the church, we put our identity in giftings. We put our identity in what God uses us to do. That's not your identity. Your identity is that you're a son and you're a daughter. And 
a crisis. And so they came together and they prayed. And then they were filled again with the Holy Spirit. And, and so what we find here, what we can learn from this is that whenever we are facing a crisis in our life, the Spirit of God wants to fill you again to be able, so you can be able to bear whatever you have to face. Come on, sometimes, sometimes we, we try to go on an expiration date, come on, a filling, and we try to deal with circumstances on our last filling, but God said, I want to give you grace, I give you another filling, so you can deal with the problem at hand. And so it is important that we be filled over and over again. The next scripture is Ephesians 5 and 18. Pride is a cunning 
fighting spirit. Because pride will mask itself like humility. And so what we have to be ever careful of is that we don't come in the house of God and miss out on what God has for us just because we don't like the person that's delivering the message. Because the person, the way I know the way God works is that the very person that you don't want to hear will be the very one that gives a word Come on, somebody. That will change your situational outcome. And so, because I've been guilty of it, can I get free? You ask, who's speaking Sunday night? Oh, I ain't coming, because I don't want to hear him. Who's speaking Sunday morning? Oh, mm -mm, mm -mm, child, I ain't got time for that. Okay. 
name. When you look up the word office in the Greek, how many know that's in the Bible? When you read, when you look up the word office, office literally means in the Greek, waiter or servant. So when God calls you to an office of a teacher, an office of a prophet, an office of a pastor, you are a waiter or a servant. That's what it all boils down to. Because our giftings will fade away. Come on, somebody. But we use the word title. Now, if you're wearing the name and not doing the work, that's just what it is, a title. But if you are effective and you are serving in that office, you are a servant. You can look it up. It's a big went over your head. You can look it up for yourself. So God has called us to be servants that is filled with his spirit. Paul said that it's no longer I, but it's Christ that lives inside you. <clears throat> John the Baptist said, I must decrease so he can increase. We have too many. I'm sorry. I just got to. Y'all want me to hoop and do all that, but we need teaching. True. Yeah, true. We have too many carnal Christians sitting in the house of God. Too many fleshly Christians sitting in the house of God. Hear me, Lord. If you are prop, if you operate in a prophetic ministry, stop being prophetically messy. Using what you see to treat people yeah. with ill content. Yeah. It's in here. Using what you know about people to not greet them in love. Using what you, the Lord shows you about somebody and you throw it in their face. Preachers and teachers preach after the spirit and not what you know is going on in the church and you get the attitude, well, I'm going to tell them. Using our platform to be messy.
So we're going to stand to our feet. I know it's probably not something that you were not looking for. Ah. But it's time for us to be filled and to be refilled with the Holy Spirit over and over and over again. Can you just play softly? So right now, I'm just going to go call to repentance. If you want to come to the altar, you can come to the altar, but how many know that God can meet you right where you are? Amen. So right now, from the womb into the door, if you know that you need to repent of any wrongdoing, how many know the Bible says that we will give an account for every word and every thought? Good or bad, we'll give an account. So I ask you to just search yourself and just right now, let's just take a couple moments to repent. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus, to come on the stage with me. How many know that sometimes we miss it because we get emotional with the music going and everything like that? But you know it's real. Come on, somebody. When the music stops and you're still pressing, you're still seeking. There is more of you here. There are more of you that are struggling with some things. And you cannot stop it. That's because you need to be filled with the Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. It's a free gift. I'm not going to belabor the time any longer. I'm, I'm just going to do one more call. I just feel the unction in this place. There is someone in here that the Holy Spirit is giving you one more time. If that's you, I, I, I would admonish you to press into this altar. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I'm going to close the altar. Amen. If you are out here and you know how to pray in the Spirit, I want you just to pray in the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I, I'm sorry, there is somebody. The Lord is tugging at your heart. And you have had the Holy Spirit, but you have been grieving the Holy Spirit. The Lord said, I'm giving you one more time. Now, all of you that's up in this altar, you need to forget about everybody that is next to you. And your focus is Jesus. That's your focus. I'm going to release the intercessors, the prayer orders to go to whoever the Lord leads you to. Thank you, Jesus. And your focus is Jesus. Out of your mouth, begin to open your mouth and just call on Jesus. Come on, just open your mouth all over this place and call on Jesus the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, as you're led. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. 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 Come on, call on him. Call on him. Hold on real quick. Hold on real quick. Jesus. Come on, call on him. Can you work with someone, Prophet Jermaine? Jesus, come on. Brother Gabe, right there. Jesus, come on, call on him. Come on, all over this place. Just begin to call on the name of the Lord. Jesus. Come on, call on him. Come on, call on him. Come on, you gotta open your mouth. Jesus, 
Jesus, call on the name of the Lord. Jesus, come on, call on him. Call on him. Come on, call on him. Call on him. Call on him. Call on him. Come on, out of your belly. Come on, out of your belly. Call on him, yeah. Call on him. Jesus, come on. If you have this altar, open up your mouth. Uh huh, uh huh. Ah, uh -uh. yes, God. Come on, call on him. Come on, call on him. Breathe. Move her back. Breathe. Oh, come on. From, the, from your belly. Come on. No, 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 no. Shake it, Anna. Yes, yes. Oh, come on, Anna. Yeah, keep Anna, Masha. Come on, keep calling, 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 calling. Calling. Thank you, Jesus.
Come on. Don't get part of the way there and retreat. Come on. Press in. There's a couple here that you have condemnation in your heart. The Holy Ghost said, let go of that. Let go of the past. Jesus said, if we are evil and know how to give good gifts to our children, if they ask of us bread, we don't give them a stone. If they ask of us an egg, we don't give them a scorpion. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Let go of condemnation. God loves you. He wants you to be filled with His Spirit. All you got to do, the Bible said it's three promises. Ask, you shall receive. Seek, you shall find, knock, the door will be open. All you got to do is ask the Holy Father and he'll give the Holy Spirit to you. Don't let condemnation hold you back. Come on. Come on. These three, the first lady is laying hands on. Thank <laughs> you. 
God said that he's going to make you international. You're going to be internationally known because of your heart. You barely find a heart like yours. But God said that you have a heart for people. And God is getting ready to make you known on an international level. So God said, do not limit. Take the next 10 days and make your plan of what you want God to do. And God said, I'm going to open every door for you. Because your heart is pleasing to God. Thank you, Jesus. Can you just point your hands this way? Father God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. God, we pray for open doors. In the name of Jesus. God, you said that she's been pleasing in your sight. So God, I pray right now that everything that you have for her, God, you will release it. In the name of Jesus. We thank you and we praise you. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord. Come on, let's go see and see. I'm getting out of here. I'm getting ready to pass this night. Some of you probably got it. Some of you probably didn't. But keep seeking. How many know that they tarry? They have to wait. Come on, somebody. In the other room, they have to tarry for it. And God is going to give it to you. But by your understanding, begin to do a study on the Holy Spirit. Begin to read scriptures. Begin to ask questions. Come to Bible study. So that God can impart to you his spirit because he would that every one of us have it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's hard to let out. The prophetic is open. Thank you, Jesus. We pray virtue. Back to your body. Now, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I just hear your spirit. Satan, take your hands off of me. I'm not going to be able to do that. Satan, take your hands off of me. I want to make this clear. You ain't got no power here. Satan, take your hands off of me. Satan, take your hands off my health. No, no, no. Satan, take your hands off my health. I want to make this clear. You ain't got no power here. Satan, take your hands. Of my health. Yes, Father, we pray right now for your healing virtue to in her body from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Healing flow.
Rakumanyo. Rakumanyo Swaya. God bless him for his obedience and his boldness this morning. In the name of Jesus. Somebody ever tell the Lord thank you one more time.
We'll do dinner together both nights, and we're just going to get to know each other just a little bit better. Is that all right? All right. And then we're going to come back tonight at 6.30. Can we just say a prayer for our bishop, and then we're going to go home? Father, we thank you for our bishop. We send the word, Father, as he's ministering in Albany or as he's on his way home, Father. We ask right now that you would touch him and his passengers, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We pray right now, God, that you continue to touch his body. Lord, I ask right now that you would give him instruction on how to lead us and guide us. We thank you for our other locations, God, Portland and Albany and our Africa locations, Lord. We thank you for supernatural expansion, Father, as we are on the brink of a new year, God. We thank you for filling us with the Holy Ghost. We thank you for giving us your spirit, Father. Help us to be one body, one church, one love, one baptism. In the name of Jesus, God, protect us as we come from this house of prayer, your house, God, unto our houses, God, and come back again at 630 tonight. Bless us in Jesus' name. You're dismissed in his presence. Amen.